Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Dr. Cloud Show. We are live from Southern California, where it's another beautiful day in lockdown, day number um, X something. Hope it's going well for you. I hope you're staying safe. And this is the program where we get to talk. So you can call me and we're going to talk about all of our issues. I would say we're going to talk about your issues where you want to talk to. Yesterday, I was talking about my issues. And, um, you know, really got help. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, but here is the number to call 844-940-2774. It's 844-940-2774 for the Dr. Cloud Show. And a little bit about the show. If you haven't tuned in before, it's new. We just started this. Um, and if you enjoy it, what we would like is for you to share it. Um, whatever platform you're watching on, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you are. Share it with your friends because um, we're going to try this for a while, as we said. And if we find that there's um, interest in it and an audience, we'll keep doing it. But to do that, it's got to get out there. So we need your help. OK, so here is the number. I got an idea. Some of you are in lockdown with somebody you love and you've been waiting to look at them and say, you have issues. Here's the number. Call them. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe some of you shouldn't do that because that person, you know, might not like it and it's not the right time or place. But anyway, not a bad idea. Email it to your friends, 844-940-2774. Okay, we're going to be going to the phones here um, in just a second. But one of the things I like to do is I like to listen to you guys about um, things that matter to you and the things you're calling about. Um, you know, we pay attention to those. We pay attention to the issues that that come up well, that's one of the ways um for our platform boundaries.me um which you can become a subscriber to if you go to boundaries.me and get a lot of help and a lot of different issues you know we try to listen to our community and our audience and find out what are the things that you want to know about and if you are a boundaries.me subscriber please let us know you know we're we're creating new little mini courses on there all the time about different topics and so if you let us know and enough people want that one, I will do it for you. Same thing on the show. So speaking of the show, one of the things that we've noticed is kind of um, uh, not an uncommon theme um, is we've been getting calls about a very, very, very difficult relationship. And that is the relationship sometimes between an adult child and their parent or parents. Now, adult child, in my view, should not be a term that exists because an adult is not a child. That's an oxymoron. Those words don't go together. Adult child, you're either a child or you're an adult or you're somewhere in between, which we call a teenager. But at some point, you're supposed to be, you know, responsible for yourself. And not only responsible for yourself, are you ready? The three words that we like to have come together, which are freedom, responsibility, and control. Now, I want you to remember those three words. It's a pretty good formula. I like to throw in there, you know, love and consequences as well. All of those things should be equal. So let's just take the freedom and responsibility and control. When somebody gets to be, in my view, 18 years old, you know, I mean, there's circumstances, but by and large, if you're 18 years old, I say this to my daughters, you're 18 years old. I don't have control of your life anymore. You're free under the law. You, I mean, you can, you know, you're an adult, but you're also responsible with that freedom. So don't look to me to try to control it or be responsible for it or pay for the consequences of it. Because I only want to be responsible for things I can control and I can't control you. Now, the good side of that is you get to be free. All right. So if you take those three words, freedom, responsibility, and control, and you're looking at somebody that's an adult, all right, then an adult should have the freedom to make their own choices live their lives in the way that they want to do, experience the consequences within the law and everything else. But it's their life. It's not their parents' lives. I say this as a child. 
I had parents, and I say this as a parent, I have kids. We're all responsible for our own lives at a certain age. So we've got a lot of calls where people don't feel that freedom from parental or in-law, par parent parental in-law, is that a word? <laughs> parental in-law pressure to make their own choices about what they're going to do with their lives and their career and their money and how they raise their kids and all of those things. And sometimes parents aren't really granting that freedom. So we got two sides of this equation, kids that aren't taking the freedom and parents that aren't wanting to grant the freedom. So here's a conversation that's worth having with yourself. If you are a parent or you are a, hate to say child, <laughs> let's say uh, if you are one that has, um, your offspring are now over 18 years old, if you're in that role, or you are a person over 18 years old whose parents are now still in your life and doing, wanting to have voting rights, then just ask yourself from either side of that equation, how are we doing? Have we ever had the conversation? Have you ever sat down and said, you know, we started out like this, that's great. And gradually now, you know what? I'm not a child anymore or you're not a child anymore. So let's talk about how things have changed. What am I no longer responsible for? What are you now responsible for and vice versa? Great conversation to have because here's the psychological consequences and spiritual consequences. If we are walking around in adult bodies feeling psychologically like we're under parental figures, by definition, emotionally, psychologically, relationally, we are not functioning as adults. We have regressed into a stuck position. And so as I wrote about in Changes at Heal, that comes with a whole list of symptoms, feelings of inferiority that you walk around with if people are parent figures to you as an adult in your head. You sit at a meeting, a business meeting, and everybody else looks like big people, but you feel like inside, I know I dress like a big person, but I don't feel like I'm equal to them. And I'm not talking about position or job. I'm talking about as a human, that your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions have just as much value as anybody else's. Feelings of inferiority, anxiety, people pleasing, not wanting to disappoint somebody with your choices. Needing permission to feel okay about what you want to choose or do or things like that. Depression, anxiety, stress, thinking problems, worry. You're walking around like this in life, feeling one down to some parent figure. It's really hard to live an adult life from down here because everything in your head gets judged. Critical voices, et cetera, are operating all the time. So let's make some moves to get up here and achieve adulthood. Okay. So that's kind of our opening thought for today. We're going to go to um, the phones here. Let me give you the number. It's 844 940 Two seven seven four. That's eight four four nine four zero two seven seven four. My daughter's just just brought me some lunch. That was nice. Eight four four nine four zero two seven seven four. It is really really interesting doing a live radio show with no people here. I mean, you know, my team is spread out. Um, as I, you know, thanks to Greg and Albie and Jessica but they're literally all over the country and we're all logged in here and we're trying to, but I, I, I need another set of arms around here. Will somebody come visit me, please and help push the buttons. Okay. So let's go to Sherry who's calling us from somewhere in Indiana. Sherry, welcome to the Dr. Cloud show. Hi, Dr. Cloud. Good Big, morning. Long time Good fan. afternoon. Actually. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, it it well, can't, be uh, a long time, can't be a long-time fan on the show because we just started. So you must have well, read a book or something. Well, yeah, boundaries changed my life, literally. I mean, I know a lot of people say that probably. But um, also, I listened to you back when Minareth Meyer and oh, Dr. Back. Townsend. 
Yeah. yeah. Back when you were well, on the radio station. Well, it's good to hear from you. Tell me how I can help you today. What's your question? Yeah. Um, I was raised to be responsible for everybody's feelings and oh, their oh, consequences. Oh, no. That's a big job. Yeah, it is. Do people, now, when but you're, when since you're responsible, I, wait a minute, when you're responsible for the whole world, do people tithe to you? I mean, that's yeah, kind of like God. God, I mean, people tithe to God for, for being in that chair. People should be, if you're <laughs> responsible for it, they should be, they should be sending their checks in. I hope you're getting those. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. But right, with so. the boundaries book, you know, <laughs> with the boundaries book, as a Christian, I learned that it's okay to say no. Oh, come so on. So my mantra now. Really? No. <laughs> my mantra no. now over the last 25 years has been, I am not responsible. I'm not responsible. I'm not responsible. <laughs> Whenever I get those or, feelings of wanting to rescue. Oh, for, for, for somebody else's here. I'm, I'm going to reach up here and yeah. adjust something yeah. here. Since I'm producer as okay, well. And, okay. So and, what's your question? Um, I'm on my I'm on my second marriage, um, second probably destructive marriage. And um, I we've been separated. I live in an apartment since November. We've only been married three and a half years. And we're both in our sixties. But my husband has some physical um, diagnosis that he refuses to get help for. And he finds it. He has anger issues too. And he keeps blaming me for his symptoms. And he also, whenever he gets angry like that, he also threatens divorce often. That's why he finally, the last time in November when he said, I'm going to file on Monday, and I said, up to that, you know, it's been going on so many times that I don't get upset about it anymore. I'm like, okay, if that's what you feel like you have to do, that's not what I want. But if you feel like you have to do, I can't stop you. Okay. So, and, and, um, yeah, and you've probably given him other options. Why don't we go talk to somebody, get some help? Oh, yeah. that We already tried that early in the marriage, very early, like the first year. Well, and um, try I, I whenever I hear that phrase, we tried that. It's not like that, you know what I mean? It's not like there's that. It's not like counseling lives here in this one little shack and we went there and it it didn't work. I mean, sometimes sometimes you go to counseling, you try counseling, and that counselor might not be a good match, it might be at a different time, might there but usually if things get to a place of separation, there's some, some attempts we follow up with, right? That, so is more than just that one attempt been tried? He doesn't want to go. And um, I'm in, I've been in therapy since my 30s and I'm, you know, my 60s now. But um, yeah, our pastor with the one that married us was, and that's the one that Tim went to to um, ask for help with the marriage. But uh, the after he wouldn't go separately, and um, then and in the the marriage counseling sessions, he would only keep repeating himself and getting angrier. So our pastor gave up, and he just okay, looked well, at me and <clears throat> said. Okay, so he looked at you and said he's done with counseling? No, he looked at me and said, Sherry, you know, you have, you are married to a man who throws fits. And you will have to learn to live your own life and grow closer to God. And, and I said, well, you know, I did that in my first marriage. That's not what I want. Oh, it's just what but, the counselor said to you. Yes. With him, okay. with my husband in the room. Yeah. All and right. said, you know, we're not, get, we're not getting anywhere. He's stuck and we're not getting anywhere. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. And he's so been generally, generally when a counselor gets to that place, what they say is something like, you know what? I don't feel like I'm being helpful here and we're not getting anywhere, but you guys do need some help. 
And here's a couple of names of people that I want you to go see. That would be what a normal occurrence would be if a counselor hits a dead end with somebody is to make an appropriate referral. Did that happen? No, no, because Tim doesn't want to go. Well, I understand that part, but the referral didn't even, it wasn't even brought up to go seek other counselor. I'm all, I already see a, a counselor. No, 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 I meant for the both. No. Okay. No, all right. Uh -uh. So I, I think I get it. So tell me, tell me your question. How, how can I help you? Uh, what do I do with a man that's stuck? I mean, every time I, he, you know, he's made absolutely no, um, effort towards me when I call because I miss him and I love him or go out there to get some more of my things. It's just the same conversation over and over again. He blames me for his issues. Well, I don't know exactly what it is that that you're missing. I mean, are, are there good moments that you guys have that you miss? So apart from all this conflict, you guys have good some good moments or y'all just every time you talk, it's all about conflict and blame and anger. Uh, that's where it's at right now. Yes. Missing what it was like before, before we got married and I moved into his house and it started okay. with things like, all right, let me, let, let me make a couple of suggestions. Um, obviously, obviously he's not happy. Right. I mean, he's struggling with his health and he's estranged from his wife and he's living alone. Is is does he say he's, he said, I'm fine with this. We can just keep doing this forever. Uh, no, no. He, so what does he want? Uh, has what does moments, he want? I don't know. I've asked him that. And he says back to the same conversation. I want you to stop bringing whatever it is that you're bringing to the house. That's making me have breathing issues and headaches. I want you to stop doing that. And I said, I've taken everything okay. away. I've done everything. Right. Let me. Okay. So here's, let, let me just offer, you know, a couple of thoughts here and you can, you can think about them and see if you see, see if it fits. You know, one of the things when, when you're in a log jam, um, you've got to also decide kind of, you know, when you're going through a circle over and over and over, back and forth at some at some time you say you know what this isn't helpful just to having the same conversation and so you have a lot of different options and you got to figure out which one of those you know you want to choose but but for example when you tune in and i would suggest you go talk to your counselor about this and figure out what do you want and what kind of stand are you willing to take that he might not like or might not agree with, but it's something like you figuring out, you know, Jim, I couldn't tell if you said Jim or Tim. Um, I don't know what his name is, but let's call him Jim. So Jim, you know, I love you and I want us to have a good relationship. Um, we keep arguing over and over and over. So that's not getting us to a better relationship. And I want to know what you want as well. But here's what I don't want to do anymore. I don't want to come over and have the same conversation again, where you tell me A, B, or C about your health that literally I can't do anything about. Okay. Now, if there's something that I can do about your health, here's what I would be willing to do. I would be willing to go with you and me to your doctor and let's talk about with this health problem that you have, what does it require from me in order for you to be healthy or not? And what does it not? And I will be willing to entertain and agree probably with what the doctor says, because that's all I can do. Okay. I can do that. That's something I can control. I can wear this and not wear that or whatever. What I won't do anymore is be berated for it or listen to that or the blame. And when that happens, then that's when I'll end the conversation. Okay. Option number two, what I would really like 
is for us to figure out a way to get on a path being back together. And that's going to start with being able to talk to each other and talk to each other. Well, where we're trying to understand each other. I really want to know what you want. I want to know what you feel. I want to know what it is you want in our, our marriage as a team. I want us to dream about that and talk about it and get there together. But right now we are incapable of having that conversation by ourselves. So I want to have that conversation. So I am going to find a marriage counselor. In addition, I'm going to continue my individual counseling. I'm going to find a marriage counselor and I would like for you to come with me. Okay. Now, if you don't want to come with me, I'm going to find a marriage counselor to help advise me on at least what I can do to help our marriage. And I really want you to come with me, but I'm going to go. Okay. So let's do that. Otherwise I'll come visit and we have a nice time and we talk about everything that's not on that list because <laughs> I'm not going to be berated and blamed about all that, that I can't do anything about, especially without going to the doctor. Let's go to the doctor and let him tell me, and then I'll be glad to look by it. So what you have control of is what you have control of. It's right back to the conversation I was talking about earlier. You have control of what you choose to wear, whether it's perfume. I don't know what he's talking about that causes his health problems. But you can get medical advice with that, and you can choose to live by it. But what you won't agree to do, I would guess, is to keep being told to take control of something you you can't do anything about. Okay? so. A few thoughts there. I hope that's helpful to you. Thank you for your call. I hope you guys can get in with somebody else. You know, uh, couples all the time, you know, get to a place where you can talk about a lot of stuff and then you hit that thing that you can't talk about well because it turns into a blame fest and a hot potato fest and throwing things over. You know, you, know, you take no, you take the blame. No, that's not mine. That's yours. You're fighting about it. Well, you know what? I, when I used to work with couples a lot, you know what I would tell them sometimes? I'd just stop and say, look, guys, this, we're going to talk about this topic right here. And I'm going to help you talk about it. But I don't want you talking about this topic if I'm not in the room. Because when you guys talk about certain topics, you shouldn't talk about those topics without an adult in the room. And when I hear you talk about them, there's no adult in the room if you're by yourself. And that's when a third party is needed. You know, because some somebody's blaming and getting angry and not listening and not trying to understand and not compromising. That's not the way adults resolve things. So, you know, what I want you to know, Sherry, is if you you're not have if he's not talking to you like an adult then you got to make the request to let's go talk with an adult chaperone so that they can help us do this well. That's what third parties do. Okay. Let me tell you another thing while we're on the topic here that third parties do. Third parties are able to detoxify messages, detoxify them. So like a virus scan. You get a couple together sometimes and you say A, and the way they hear it is A, a lot more critical or hurtful or whatever than the way they said it. Or maybe they say it in a way that's really hurtful and more critical than somebody can hear it. Well, what you need is sort of like a dialysis machine. And that's the third party where they say to that person, hold on a second. You know, Susie, what I think he's trying to say, and by the way, I want you to be able to learn to say this better. But what I think he's trying to say is, or what the way you're hearing this is, and you, you, the third party can help metabolize toxic messages, get the gold out of there and take the bacteria away and then make it be able to be heard and listened to and give it back. And that's a big part. You know, the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. Well, sometimes what a peacemaker has got to do is to make important messages that are said in violent and non-peaceful or peace-creating ways to make them be able to be heard. 
And as you're out there today, I want you to think about people that you know that are in conflict with one another and you step into that role and try to do that. Because there's something important that each of them have to say, even if it's said in the wrong way. Our number, 844-940-2774, 844-940-2774 to get on the program. And topics like this that we talk about, you can find on boundaries.me. Go there and become a subscriber. Talk about all these kinds of things that we just get to talk about for a few minutes here. You go in there and there's you know, a whole library of many little lessons about these kinds of issues that we all deal with. Boundaries.me. Check it out. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones here, and we're going to talk to Lori, who is calling us all the way from the great state of Colorado. Lori, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Cloud. Hello. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you so much for taking my call and doing all that you've done for my life, for so many people's lives. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. That makes it all worth it. You know, you sit in a little room, write little books, and you never know if it's going to help anybody, but then sometimes they tell you it does. <laughs> and so that's it really, that's why I do it. So thank you. So here's question? my deal. Ready? I'm I ready. do. Oh, well, I think I'm ready. I How do. do I know if I'm ready or not, Lori? This may be <laughs> that question that I feared. My entire <laughs> life, the one you're going to make me cringe and faint in my, and blow up and my eyes are going to pop out and go, no, not that question. But we'll try. Uh, okay. Okay. I hope I'm not. But then again, that would I be kind of unique, right? By definition. Okay. So um, a couple of years ago, um, I was diagnosed with cancer and luckily mm. I'm, I'm good and clear now, but in that adventure... Yay. Um, I was going through, yep, exactly. Yay. Um, I was going through treatment and I chose a route that I guess a lot of people don't choose. And I was speaking with my doctor, um, my general doctor, and I was saying, you know, I just don't understand why I'm not, you know, doing this route. It seems really weird to me. I don't know why I'm not doing that. And he laughed and he said, no, it kind of makes sense. And I'm like, no, no, what I'm saying is I always go the middle route, the, the middle line. And he laughed and he said, no, no, you're really kind of a out of the box thinker. And okay, I was so like, just, just hold on a second. I, I, I need to make sure I know what we're talking about here. There's a, there would be a normal path to go down with your kind of cancer. You chose a different path. And then you ask the question, I wonder why I chose that different path because I'm usually right down the line. Is that what you said? Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. And so he said, no, you're not. You're out of the box. And so then your <laughs> question about that is what? Well, and, and so I'm an artist and I teach art and I rarely tell people that because I thought, well, I'm so middle of the line kind of person that they probably would think that, you know, that's weird. You're not like a real creative person. Anyway, this whole thing kind of, I called a friend of mine and said, hey, I think my doctor just said I'm kind of weird. And she laughed and she said, well, yeah, you're kind of different there, friend. And I went, oh, so the last two years I've approached life differently, like more accepting of, of who I am. I didn't realize who I was. And now I... I, I've been thinking about your whole thing of a fingerprint and, and what we have to give to life and, and what our gifts are. And I have gone the wrong direction for so long. I want to go the right direction, but I, I'm kind of tangled up because I'm 56. Like, do I Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 money whoa, on a master? Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, but, stop. You said you've gone the wrong okay. direction for so long and you want to go the right direction. What's the wrong and the right? Are you lying, cheating, and the stealing? Wrong... <laughs> That's well, the wrong probably... direction. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're right. So That's what... the wrong direction. My my job doesn't make me happy. I don't feel fulfilled. I don't enjoy going. I used to, I'm an art teacher, and um, I, I used to teach in a grade level that I loved, but I live in a small town right now, and 
Okay, so you but don't like I just, what you're doing. I be Is that what you mean by the wrong direction? Partly because because I I uh, okay, I got to get to a I question. I feel like I have more to give. Okay, I feel like I have more to give. What is a good route for discovering your gift? How's that? I like that question. Okay. Are you, are you saying you're looking for gifts outside of creative gifts? Or are you looking for a different way to express your creative gifts? I guess a different way. Like I've been more involved in ministry at, at church and, and things like that. And, well, that, and that, hold on a second. But that, just... that doesn't, hold on a second. Ministry is not a gift. Uh, you know, creativity and music and art, that's a gift. Now, you can do that in a, quote, ministry, which I guess you mean church context, or you can do that in a business. But business or ministry is not a gift. Gifts are Ooh, gifts true. are uh, gifts are abilities. You know, we have we have certain everybody has different makeups. And, you know, like like I. I've got two girls. They have very, very different talents and abilities, and they have some that are the same. You know, and anybody uh-huh. we know, a circle of friends, there's different gifts. So ministry versus business is not, that's just a context of where you go live it out. What I'm asking is, are you thinking, gosh, I always liked things artistic, but now I want to go into spreadsheets and accounting and financial services <laughs> kinds of work? Or are you saying, I want to do, creative artistic things in a different path which one are you talking about because there are people that you know they grow up i i i know somebody who was a a very 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 well-known doctor whose grandfather was a surgeon medical centers were named after him his father was a surgeon head of the same big medical center. And so what was he going to become? A surgeon, right? Yeah. Well, right. the only problem was he was brilliant. He was able to do it. He was smart enough. But it wasn't his gift and his passion. His gift and his passion was music. And at night, you could find him playing mm. the saxophone in bars. And so it was a totally different set of gifts. Now, he passively found a way to get out of that mess. He started leaving sponges in patients. And got, <laughs> oh, yoy. Yeah, passive aggressive, I'm going to make my choice, right? And so my point is sometimes we get talked out of the very essence of who we are. A kid's an athlete, they're told they yeah. ought to be an artist. A kid's an artist or a musician, they're told they ought to be an athlete. I'm asking you, are you talking about you need to find out what you love doing? Or are you talking about finding a different path to dip it in? I think I like that narrowed down that way. I think I'm looking at that that first one where you, what, how, how should I be using what I have to give? Okay, so you don't want to go non-creative. Um, I want to be happy, and I want to Bad do goal. what I was put on this earth to do. Good goal. Happiness is kind of not something we control. Happiness comes from a lot of different places. Yeah. Right. So, right. right. So I, I, here's what I would suggest you do. I, I think what you what might serve you well is I want you to go back and do a little bit of a, 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 a brain search here, <laughs> kind of a memory, go down uh-huh. sort of uh, memory lane and think uh-huh. about. So when I look back, the moments, I like to talk about moments because moments are really what life is about. And a lot of times we find in certain moments we find the essence of it coming together of where what's inside of me makes contact with the outside world. And when were the moments that you felt most timeless, like the clock went away 
like I'm not drudging. When was this going to end? When do I get off my my work shift here? When do I? Because when we're in what researchers call the flow, where our abilities in a challenge are being matched, and there's some sort of way in which we get lost in it, that's a moment. That's a moment of flow, where we really step into eternity, and we step into a place where the essence of who I am is getting expressed here. And there's a variety of those in different columns in our lives. But what you're going to see is there are some moments where when you look back, you were truly alive. And maybe you hadn't grown out of that. Maybe that's still there. And you're not getting to express that. And then you look for contexts in which you can express that. Sometimes it's vocationally. Some everybody's got to make a living. Sometimes it's in a hobby. Sometimes it's in service. A lot of different ways we can do it. But there's a gift inside of you. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You said something about ministry. I'm gonna leave you with this this suggestion, and then I've got to go to some some other calls. But one of my, um, because I know some people of faith listen to this program and maybe you're not a person of faith but if if you're not i would suggest um a a chapter in the bible to you that you go look at it because it is a great great picture for this and it's romans chapter 12 and here's it's such an interesting path this is what i would would suggest to you Lori. it says it says that we, the first thing is that, you know, we start in light of, you know, God has made me, he's got this mercy and this love and all this for me. So I'm going to start by saying, okay, I'm a creation of you, God. And I'm just going to start here and say, I'm empty, emptying myself. I don't know who I am. Everybody wants to tell me who I am. I don't know who I am but I'm going to offer myself to you to serve and like you said, contribute in the world and contribute and serve. And that's kind of the best thing. I'm paraphrasing the passage, kind of the best thing I can do. This is my, this is my act of worship. It says, and then it goes into the, into the path. And this is what I want you to think about these steps. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but by the transforming of your mind. Then he goes on to say, then you'll find the perfect will of God, who he created you for, your purpose. But the first thing is stop everybody else from pressuring you in the world and culture and family and church and expectations and all this, making you conform into somebody you weren't created to be. First step in finding identity is saying no to who we're not. So first thing we're going to do is, okay, I'm not going to conform to all these expectations. And then what's the next step? You know what it says? It says, and then don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but have a sober estimation of yourself. All right. And then from there, it says, because these are linked, then from there it says, it talks about If your gift is this, then go use it. Try it. Use it with the amount of of grace and faith that you've been given. All right. So put all those together. I'm going to say no to all these expectations. I'm going to find something in myself that gives me these moments. I've got this gift here. I like to doodle. I like to draw. I'm creative. All right. Well, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, which means I shouldn't expect myself to be all of a sudden in the most expensive gallery in New York as an artist. I shouldn't expect myself to, as the first time I've tried this in this career, to be where somebody is who's been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. I should have reasonable expectations of myself, which is I'm just starting to learn. What does that do? It frees you to go try. It frees you to go take a step and it frees you to 
I'm going to paint this. Oh, well, that sucked. I'm going to try again. Why, what do you think? about? And we get on this path and then we start to learn. And then it says, go do that with all of your energy. So what happens is you get rid of the expectations of other people. You get in touch with what you feel like your own particular moments are about. And you go try those. And you don't have these grandiose expectations that it's got to be something bigger in the beginning or this and the other. And we try it. And what we find is certain things have momentum. And there's another verse in Proverbs that says our path comes from our heart. And then God directs our steps. So what we've got to do is we got to start with what gets my interest? What gets my passion? What do I like? When do the moments go away? I've got a daughter who's a singer. By the way, all of you guys, write this down. Go to Lucy Cloud Music. Lucy Cloud Music um, on Instagram, uh, on uh, YouTube, on Spotify, and on iTunes and Apple Music and all of that. Um, listen to her songs. She She's just released a couple songs. She's awesome. And she's got a new song that will be released tonight, I think, at midnight Eastern time. Lucy Cloud Music. Anyway, I'm going to use her as an example. That girl, from the time she was like this big, all she could do is sing. I mean, I, you know, there's other things we try to get her interest in. She liked to play soccer because she liked hanging out with the kids. She loved being on a team. But she'd be out there dwindling on the field playing with flowers. Like, she just wanted to be on the team and play with the kids. She liked it, but it, the moments didn't go by in soccer where they went by in music. I mean, when she was doing music, it's like a different deal. See, we all have that. But some people haven't created the space to go find what makes you come alive and then just start to practice it somewhere without any big expectations and see what happens. Okay. This is the Dr. Cloud show. It is um, time to go back to the callers. I want to give another little reminder, though, of the number 844-940-2774. And also a reminder for you to help us. And I say us, not me, because I look at this as we're building a community here. I go on Facebook. For example, you guys are talking to each other. You're helping each other. You're supporting each other. Um, but help us build this community, because if it doesn't build if there's no audience for it then we won't do it but if there is we will so i need you to send people to the program you know it doesn't have to be during the hour that we're on live that's the time you call in but it sits there 24 7 so refer people to it if we're getting enough views and people are liking it we'll keep doing it okay and then also go check out boundaries.me boundaries.me that is the place where you can become a subscriber and there's a community that's building there of people helping each other with all these different issues. And I am on there to help you with new stuff every ongoing way, every month. Lots of new stuff comes out. Boundaries.me. Okay. So let's go to uh, back to the phones. And we're going to talk to Paul, who is calling us from the windy city of Chicago. Paul, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Cloud. I'm in a very difficult season in my life, and I've seen you speak mm -hmm. at the Willow Creek Leadership Summit a few times. Uh, I've really appreciated yeah. you, and I just joined your uh, boundaries.me website um, oh, cool. because I'm looking for some help in learning to grow. Um, mm -hmm. My wife uh, told me six weeks, basically six weeks ago, my wife told me she wanted a divorce at the beginning of quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, she fell for a guy from work uh, who lives in Portland, and um, she was planning on visiting him in, in May, uh, and she just left on Sunday. Oh. And, uh, I filed the papers on Monday and uh, to start the, start the divorce. And I, she's coming back on Saturday, and I find myself as the time is passing that I'm starting, starting to turn and starting to get emotionally over it. But I feel with her return, it's just going to put that's me a, right back a, because here I am. She's in, a, back in the house. That's, She's gonna be, that's yeah. a pretty fast getting over it. I mean, she, well, I mean, it's not getting, I've been working at growing myself yeah. and I've been going and seeing another therapist. And I mean, I've had to do, a, I've done a lot of research and I have done probably 
I realized I was a child as a man, and I have done so much growth in the in the That's time great. that she said I want a divorce, thinking so that when, I had a when chance. She to told you this in myself. February. Was when she told you in February? Yeah, yeah, end of February. Oh man, and this is out of the blue. Yeah, she apparently was on a work retreat and fell in love with a guy she's been working with for a year and just really just talk, hit it off with him and was just so enamored with him and planned on seeing him. And she's been talking to him every night on the phone almost uh, from 10 o'clock till midnight. And I'd hear her laughter echoing through the house. And I can't do anything about it because she's a grown woman and it's her choice to do whatever she wants. And she feels no shame in that in that relationship. And, and did you basically tell her because she said you, she wants a divorce, she was done. But and you you Sorry. fought for your you fought for your relationship. You said, I don't want this. Let's get some help. What's going on? How did this happen? What can I do? All of that I did. stuff. I did. She gave me one marriage counseling session where basically it was to get the marriage counselor to teach me or show me to and understand that she already had a psychic divorce with me starting two years ago. And did the marriage and counselor? And so she's been working on. That's what the marriage counselor told her. I mean, that, that told me after she went through her litany and and how she talked, and she's been seeing a therapist on her own just basically to get the strength to tell me she was divorcing me uh, for past six months to two years, and and I'm, and so now it's. How long have yeah, you been married? Oh, my goodness, it is. How long have you been married? Uh, Sixteen years. 16 years with daughters that are 22 years old with a relationship that's 23 years. So it's, it's been brutal and it's just, I'm finding myself okay. the strength to move forward a little bit, but I don't know what to do when she gets back because she's going to come right back to our house and she's going to come right back and lay in the same bed. And it's like, I don't want to sleep on the couch. And it's basically a strength of wills competition over who's going to actually move. And I don't want to be in a strength well, what, of wills. And what neither one your, of us can afford to move out. What does your attorney say? <sighs> Not much. I mean, he's just being my, I mean, there's, it doesn't matter as long as you, you can, in Illinois, it's a no fault state. So it doesn't, you can get a divorce okay, and go right back to living in the same house. Well, I'm trying I, to figure I, out how to I mean, you can do whatever you want to, but, to but so what, yeah. to, get, give me a question. I've got a lot of thoughts, but get, give me a question. First of all, my heart goes. I don't know how this to deal with. This is brutal. This is just brutal. It is, sir. Thank you. Just brutal. You had no idea. But what? Tell me. I don't know how to deal with her when she comes back. I, I wouldn't. That's that's I my question. How would I deal with that situation? Why? why yes. Why, if you are certain, there's nothing else you can do. She's down this road. There's nothing you can do. You fought as much as you can. Yeah, and you're certain this is over. Why would you want to deal with her? I you don't. Say, how can I deal with her? Okay, you both on the house. That's a legal question, right? Okay. And that's that's for you and your attorney to decide. We both own this house. How are we going to divide it up? What are my options here? But my point is, but, I I would say, look, <laughs> if you're coming back to town, you're not staying with me. You chose to leave, okay? Or I'm not staying with you. One of the two. Well, we both pay pay the mortgage together. We're both that's on the mortgage. Legal, we both pay the that, mortgage. That's a yeah, legal that's a question, legal okay. and you're going to figure that out. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what you're emotionally going to subject yourself to while she comes back and sits there and kind of by her very presence kind of you know, talking to this guy and laughing in the other room and you're sitting there supposed to, supposed to, what are you supposed to do with that? Well, I mean, it's nothing. I mean, it's worse yeah. because she, she went to be with him for the past seven days and that's why, oh, I, I, and that's why I don't want to see her again. Then that's, no. that's what's killing me. Is like, that's what I'm okay. saying. You're trying, here's what you're asking me. And, and, and I mean this with, with all due respect. Okay. I'm not. Yes, sir. But here's kind of what you're asking me. Okay. I'm going into a situation where my, I'm going to be banging my head up against the wall or somebody's going to be banging my head up against the wall. 
how do I deal with that pain? Yes. I would say That's pretty much why it. would you want it why would you want to deal with that pain? Stop the head banging. Stay somewhere else or tell her she's going to stay somewhere else. Besides, are you kidding me? If somebody's flown off all across the country and been gone, she's going to co- she ought to be not What do you know what has she been been tested for corona? I mean, come on. There's a lot of reasons for that. These are all situations I brought up. Yeah, I mean, and she just has no shame or remorse about any of it. We're not. We're not depending. And she's on just going to stop. We don't trust her, okay. right? <laughs> we're not hoping no, for not at all, this sir. flower of shame to appear from somewhere. We're not talking about her. I'm trying to come alongside you and say, what are okay. you going to protect yourself from here? I would protect myself from Corona and I'd protect myself from having to listen to her have these wonderful phone calls with whoever he is. If that's okay. your question, I don't know how, I don't know another way other than go in the basement or something. You got to get away yeah. from, if there's nothing transpiring between the two of you that is helpful, then I want you to unplug. If there's nothing, now if there's something that could be done, I'm all for talking and reconciling. But if there's not, then I don't want you getting beat up by all this in your face. Yeah. If you want to do a good Samaritan thing, right. say, hey, you can stay here. I just don't want to see you stay in that, that end of the house and I'll stay. It's up to you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to answer your question. How do you deal with this? You deal with it by having some boundaries so you're not exposed to something that's gonna that's impossible to deal with. Yeah. Does that I mean, help? It does, sir. It does. And I've been that's why I'm reaching out to you because I've been work racking my head on this one question, how to how to figure out getting out or getting her out. And uh, I've asked well, her parents the to question. take her back and they're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I they don't first want to talk. Back. First of all, I talked to I talked to my attorney. I probably talked to my doctor. Find out what your options are. But you know, there's there's two things here. There's there's COVID quarantine, and there's also emotional quarantine. So you got to make sure how you handle both of those, so you don't get infected further by this. Okay. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank, Thank you. you and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what you've gone through. And that's just uh, awful. We are uh, almost out of time here. I don't know where the time goes. Um, let's go to Aaron, um, who's calling us um, from Georgia. We got to go really quick, Aaron. I'm going to need a question because we're almost out of time. But give me a question. Okay. Um, I've been married 17 years and my husband has talked to his ex-girlfriend on and off about five or six times during our marriage. And about a month ago, I decided to make a fake email account with her name and email him to see if he would respond. And um, he did. He responded. And I told him back before Christmas. Stop for a second. So 17 years married. He's talked to her off and on. When was the last time he talked to her before you decided to to do the detective work. See, I'm not real sure. Uh, he says it was like November. Oh, and so then you, knew, during, you knew that it's been as recent as November. Yes, I knew for sure you, you knew, as okay. recent as November. I, I thought, I and, thought you, you know, if it's 10 he, years ago and all of a sudden you decide to start sending him emails, I'm going, what's Oh, no, no, that? it was recent. Okay. And all so right. I wanted to see if he would, Tell me, like, just be honest with me and say, hey, she emailed me. I just wanted to let you know, because every time I've found out about it, it's kind of been brought to light basically by God. It just has been brought to light every time. And and this last time in November, I said, okay, if you talk to her again, you might as well just sign divorce papers because I can't go through this again. I, I just can't go through this hurt. I just can't do it. So when I made the email account, I wanted to see what would happen, how he would respond, and he did respond, and and so I gave him a chance 
to tell many, and I confronted him about it when he got home from work, and I said, hey, so um, you need to get your stuff because I know you're talking to your ex-girlfriend. And he lied and said, no, I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. I've never talked to her. I never saw an email. And I said, you've never talked to her. No, I'm not talking to her. And he was just, that's all he kept saying. And so I told him, I said, you did, because it was me you were talking to and when you thought you were emailing her. So um, he told me that was well played. (laughs) And he said, um, just apologized. And all he can say now is that he was sorry he hurt me, but he was just mad because he didn't feel loved from me. So he was getting back at me by lying to me. That's the wrong answer. Um, what what did you say in the email, and what did he say back? Okay, so no, I said in the first email, I sent to his personal, and I said, hey, I've been trying to contact you because I knew she had contacted his cell phone because he has a number blocked, and it showed that she had tried to call, but it went to automatic rejection or whatever. And I said, I saw, I've been trying to contact you, couldn't get a hold of you. Well, he waited till he was at work the next day and emailed back from his work email. And said, are you okay? And I said, yeah. I, he said, I got your email, but I couldn't pull it up. And I said, yeah, I was just seeing if you're okay. And he he said, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I'm so glad you're healthy. Can we text? And so um, I said, no, I can't text. And just kind of uh, said, are you healthy? And that kind of stuff. And then he kind of quit. So I guess he kind of figured since I couldn't text that it probably wasn't her. Well, you don't know that, right? I don't know that, no. (sighs) Yeah. Um, But there was nothing in there that sounded other than, are you healthy? Are you okay? No, that was just, yeah, it was pretty short. Okay. Um, I wish we had more time, but but, I could ask you all this stuff. And um, have you guys had any counseling? Have you all gone to a marriage counseling? We were separated seven years ago, and we went to an intensive three-day thing, and um, I asked him about counseling again, and uh, he didn't look for one until this last instance has happened in the last month. He had searched a couple times and couldn't find anybody, so what happened in the what, what happened in the last month? You talking about this thing you told me about? I mean, that's when I that's when I emailed him. Like it happened a month ago, and so we've just oh, okay. kind of been. All right. Sitting. Okay. Let me get. Let me and and then the and, and I need you to go fast. So I'm really sorry about our time, but the last okay. time this happened was November, and what was what was was that salacious in any way, or is that just a how are you? I have no idea. Oh, you don't. How'd you know about it? Um, because I saw where he had her email, uh, address in his, his, um, email. And so I just said, I know you're talking to her. And, and so then he would say, mm-hmm. then he, then he had said, yeah, we, uh, we have emailed back and forth. Um, he won't ever tell me what he says. He did tell me that he did talk bad about me, that he didn't feel loved and okay. stuff. Um, All right. Let me, uh, you know, unfortunately we're out of time, but here, here's what I would tell you. It's it's difficult to say um, kind of from what happened there without knowing more of the history and this and the other. First of all, I you know he's hard to trust, right? That's just true, right? Because he's right. he's lied to you and he, he he's done this other stuff, um, and and so it, it it's you can't trust him, you know that, right? But there's a couple of confounding factors in here. There's a long-standing dynamic between the two of you that it sounds like hasn't really ever been addressed. And here's why Here's why I'm saying, I really would like for y'all to go see a really good marriage counselor with the presenting problem of you're saying, I don't know how to trust him because A, B, and C has happened. And each time he blames me for it. And at the same time, He says that he doesn't feel loved by me and I need to know why and I need to know kind of how we can get past that if we can get past that. But the big issue is I don't know how to trust him. Okay, now here's why I'm saying 
it would be worth it to have that conversation because you did an incredible job of entrapment, right? <laughs> you, you got him. He said, well played, right? But in his response, um, and granted, he probably should have said, not responded, or I can't talk to you, or, or whatever. But in his response, it sounded like he dropped it and just said, you know, kind of whatever. And I'm not saying trust this, but is it possible that he was just trying to say, well, are you okay? Yeah, I'm glad you're okay. Um, I'm not going to do this, especially from work or whatever. I'm not going to do it. And they dropped it. I don't know if that's the case, but. But there's enough unaddressed in the relationship. You know, I like, I just, I like to see people try to get to, especially with that long of a marriage, you know, try to get to what is the cancer in between us and what is the weakness of character on his part that causes him to blame you when he doesn't feel loved and to be secretive and go gripe about you somewhere else instead of to you and resolving that. I would like to see that addressed with some skilled person in the room because betrayals can be overcome. Unfaithfulness can be overcome. If everybody comes to the light, you can even get to a better place, but probably not without some help. So, I'm just saying there's enough in this where I think it's really worth it to go sit down with somebody and talk about it. Oh, such pain, such pain. Just heard about a couple of these where uh, betrayal, betrayal of trust. It's a hard thing. It's one of the hardest things actually to get over. And you don't know a lot of times what to do with it. Do you try? How hard do you try? When do you trust again? How do you trust again? When do you have hope? When do you give up hope? Well, there, there are ways to know that. There are ways that much more likely to have hope than other ways. We'll talk about those on another program. Otherwise, we would talk about it today, but we can't because we're out of time. Um, but if you go to boundaries.me, boundaries.me, you can become a subscriber to the information there. And there's a lot in there about all of these topics, including the one we were just talked about. How do we trust again? You know, when do you have a necessary ending? And when, when do you pull the plug? And when do you take a risk? And what do you do after a betrayal? All that kind of stuff you can find addressed at boundaries.me. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been good to be with you. Um, tomorrow, we are going to be at a different time. Remember I said every now and then, hopefully not too much, but every now and then I have to change the times because of previous commitments. But I want to be here, so I'll be here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time live. And so that means for all of you back in the Midwest, Central Time, that'll be 6 p.m. And for those of you on the East Coast, that'll be 7 p.m. And that's all the math I can do right now. So you'll have to figure it out in your own time zone. Um, but it's always fun to be with you. The live hour is that, but you can listen to it around the clock. And we really need you to spread the word, okay, about this and about Boundaries.me so we can keep doing it. Okay. I am Dr. Henry Cloud. It's been great to be with you. And, oh, check out my daughter's song tonight, Lucy Cloud Music. It releases her new song um, at midnight East Coast time. Okay. I will see you guys here tomorrow. Bye-bye.